So good morning everyone. This talk is going to be a bit about system performance, especially uh, kernel as well as user space. And uh, I'll be focusing a little bit more about LTTNG here. So uh, without any delay, I'm, I'm just going to start. So I'm Suchakra. I'm a PhD student at uh, Polytechnic Montreal, uh, which is associated with University of Montreal. Uh, I work on debugging, tracing, JIT compilation, and uh, dynamic instrumentation also so and that's about it so uh, today we are gonna talk about uh, tracing what is tracing but before tracing you would need to know what tracing what kind of group of tools the tracing is uh, a part of and what can you do with it why do we really need it uh, we'll talk about some tracing tools like ftrace system tap we won't talk about all the other tools uh, uh, but uh, in the end i'll give you a pointer what you can do if you want to analyze the complete performance of your system and what what would be the best choice of tools uh, the focus would be more towards LTTNG and how it's uh, how, what are the internals of LTTNG and how it has uh, uh, been developed and some some details about it and then the most important part about trace analysis tool. So, so now you will be like looking at this. Oh, well, it's all tracing. I mean, wh wh what's this thing? Okay. So, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction about tracing. So, let's start with tracing 101. So, tracing is a part of a group of tools which you can use to check system performance. You can do debugging, profiling, and uh, you can do all sorts of performance analysis. And one of those group of tools is tracing. But the thing is, when we have debuggers, when we have everything, why do we need tracing? I mean, what is the need of tracing? I really do not did not know the kind of audience which is going to be here, so it will be semi-technical and like semi-introduction to tracing sort of talk. So uh, I love bike rides. So here's a story about bike rides. So consider you have a bike, which is actually a program, and you are now running your program, which is like running your bike. And what you are doing is you are going to get Vada Pau's in your favorite uh, Vada Pau place. Okay. So, and then while you are riding, you hear a sound. Beep. I cannot make the sound properly, so, so just read it. Okay. So, so you, have, you, you have some sound, and then it's gone suddenly. Okay. And then it comes back again. And then, oh, it's suddenly gone again. So you, you, you feel, I mean, what, what's the problem? You want to diagnose the problem. It's your program which is running and you want to know what's going on. So you know some, there is some problem with the tire. Something is wrong. Okay, so there is a problem with the tire, but what's, what's the problem? So uh, you pause. So this pause is your breakpoint. You, you put a breakpoint in your program and then you pause your program. And then you start analyzing. So, so you start seeing, oh, what's, what's this? What's this? Okay, okay, le let me put a breakpoint here and see, uh, try to analyze. And then you're like, okay, let's continue. And then you continue riding your bike. And then you pause again, another breakpoint. You have put some breakpoints there. And then you start analyzing it. So the thing is, you are getting late now. So what, what does getting late mean? Obviously, you will not have Vara Pause. Probably the store is closed and you can no longer buy them. So what not having Varapau means is that you had a program which was originally intended to give you Varapaus. If it would have run properly, if you, if you would have biked properly, reached in time, you would have got Varapaus, but now you don't get it. It means that the result of program execution is inaccurate. Okay. In a normal execution, it would have been good. So there are problems, you know, but you cannot diagnose because when you try to use conventional tools, it starts failing. Okay. So what do you do so probably you can ignore the problem it will go away this is a very good solution like yeah it will get you fired but you can still try it uh, what else you can do so let's take a scenario you take some paint and you put it on your tires okay so these paint things which you have put on the tires are actually the trace points okay and then you're like, okay, I've put my trace points. It's like I've enabled those trace points. And then you ride. So what's going to happen? You start riding. It's going to leave a trace on the road. Okay, you'll see all these traces. And these traces would, would be according to what you're, how you're running. Okay, so all of these are events. So if you analyze it, if you, if you try to think about some 
events being enabled on a tire so it, it sounds a bit ridiculous but you still think about it like that and you start running your program it's going to leave the traces the traces would give you accurate time so these are time stamps which you see on all of these uh, trace points which you have so this actually is tracing it's nothing more that's the truth about tracing so you have uh, some specialized techniques like the paint on the tire and you start running your bike or whatever uh, program you have and you leave traces uh, on the road and so what you can do is you 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 can now like reach in time and uh, you have your vada pav in time and your program is running properly and uh, you can then look at all those traces which have been generated and analyze them later to find out what the problem is we'll see so you'll have some data on your trace which is like a trace payload so this is for for a tire it would be like some specialized grooves grooves or something so now as you move fast you have more trace data being generated so it's not just like one event and you have that so you have more trace data being generated each of those things were events which you generate while you are running your bike okay so still more a lot more more so what do you do with all these events it becomes very difficult to analyze it okay deal with it no 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 we are not going to deal with it we are going to do something about it i'm going to tell you so but before that let's come back to the tracing and let's try to analyze uh, what a tracer is so some of the characteristics and benefits i have laid out here so a tracer should be fast it should not alter the performance of uh, your program it should be like really fast it should not alter how your program's output would come and that's your main goal so a tracer is very fast it has low overhead it should not interfere with the target and a tracer would obviously generate large amount of data large amounts of data but we have to find out uh, what we have to do with that data a tracer is also high accuracy the time stamps have to be very accurate there have to be a mechanism where you can get in the quickest possible manner the most accurate time stamps from the system so the benefits are that you can use it to detect hidden bugs hidden bugs are certain hard to detect errors like uh, which occur some time and then they do not occur so you can let a tracer run for a long long time in your system probably even a production system and people use that so and then you can analyze your traces later on so uh, a tracer can be classified in many manners any tracer i i it's like something which i thought about so you can have either a kernel space tracer it it does tracing in the kernel space you have uh, things about your system you have things about your uh, normal user space programs and a tracer can be static or dynamic static means you put the trace points inside your program before you are trying to compile it and dynamic is that your program is running or the binary is on the disk and you try to insert trace points there and use it so uh, i'll talk also about the building blocks of tracer probably not all of them but the most important thing so the debugger style tracers can be using ptrace syscall okay so all the debuggers are not all but most of the debuggers uh, would uh, use ptrace and even if you can you can write a, your own debugger in like like 20 30 probably not 20 30 like 100 lines of code and using just the ptrace syscall but ptrace syscall is slow because inherently it's a syscall you have to do the reparenting of the process and everything so uh, the ptrace would be a bit slow so in inside the kernel you have like very intelligent techniques such as the trace event macro you you should once like go to the kernel source and have a look at it we are going to talk a, a bit about that and uh, then we are going to talk about k probes k red probes j probes etc which provide you a technique so that you can dynamically insert trace points in your uh, uh, code so uh, it's i mean it's a facility provided by the kernel so you can dynamically in instrument so let's talk a bit about trace event macro it's going to be a little bit of details i would just mostly just uh, make it a bit simple if you uh, prefer so it's it's a macro in the kernel with which automatically adds callbacks to the trace point call so you have some certain you have trace and you have your event name and uh, trace underscore some event name and you have these calls everywhere in the kernel so it it just adds callbacks to the trace points and then any other infrastructure you build using the trace event macro which is built upon it can uh, have that data and can do whatever it wants with the data so it's a, it's used by almost all the tools which are uh, which provide tracing inside the kernel it's, it's used by ftrace ltdng system tap 
So it looks a bit like that. So it's it's a small uh, trace event macro for sketch switch event. So you give the event name here. You have a function prototype. You you can uh, specify how to store data. It's it's a very detailed process. So uh, you can look at all these. Uh, trace uh, trace points uh, which have been uh, done previously you can look at the kernel source code you will find a lot of them so for example we'll we'll deal with sketch switch a bit so it it's a bit consistent in this presentation so there are some more macros when you are defining trace points inside your kernel it provides a very good way so that you can easily define trace points inside your kernel you want to add more trace points and you can do that so um, there's a there are some macros like you define a trace system and then you have to do define create trace points you use this macro so so here is the uh, trace point being used inside the kernel so you can go to kernel sked code.c so it's the sked switch event so it's actually inside the prepare task switch so when the uh, uh, when the uh, uh, task is going to be switched so you immediately want uh, to have an event there so you'll have that event. So and at the time, there are thousands of tasks being switched again and again uh, in the system. So you get all of these traces details. So it's it's obviously a huge amount of data. So uh, then other tools, for example, ftrace, they can hook onto these trace points. So uh, ftrace has ftrace event reg. So you can use that. And uh, I mean, ftrace uses that. And it uses trace point probe register. It, it uh, registers the trace point probe. And then it, it can use it. LDTNG also use it, uses the similar techniques, some wrappers around the trace point probe register. And then you can have uh, LDTNG wrapper trace point probe register. You can use it in your module. And you can like uh, instantly get your own trace point enabled inside then there are the dynamic tracing approaches which uh, which are through k probes j probes so k probes is uh, they usually like trap into almost any kernel function you can trap into a kernel function and then uh, the target instruction you patch it with an uh, interrupt and then you have a handler for the interrupt where you can do whatever you want gather some data and um, you can optimize this by having jump optimizations instead of having trap every time. Then there are J probes and K probes. You can like go through them, but that's enough. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into details now. I understand. I see the uh, sympathy in your uh, eyes. Oh please, what is this guy doing? So, <laughs> anyways, so I'll. You want to now know what can be done? These are just too much details there. So we'll quickly jump to the tracing tools. So one of the famous tools which almost everybody knows and it's the kernel's favorite tool is ftrace. So ftrace is provided through the debugfs interface and uh, for example here I'm showing a small script of how you can use an ftrace to have a function uh, graph. So it uses the function graph tracer. There are certain trace targets like knob, uh, wake up and uh, all of these. So I'm going to show you the interesting one which I like really the most. So this, this script you do tiny function trace who am i so when a, uh, when the who am I function gets executed it's going to build a complete function graph of this so it, it would look something like that it's just a snippet there are lots of things so this shows what went on in the kernels which function was executed where the trace uh, trace points were and uh, it will show you how much time it uh, took to come out of that function how much time this function execution took and then uh, this is the it records the entries and the exits and then it uh, calculates the uh, uh, i mean the latency how much it uh, it calculates the delta of the time and how much it took so um, ftrace is really powerful but it's a bit difficult to use so you have tools built upon that like trace cmd it was done by steven and uh, you have kernel shark which gives a good geo interface so now this here you want sketch switch event so you just do trace cmd record the sketch switch event for or who am I? Okay, and then you do trace CMD report, so it gives in a bit better fashion. So it, so this is just like a small snippet. So, uh, so this gives the process name, CPU, from where it was switched to which process, the target process, and uh, so, so that's uh, how you can use ftrace. And then there is system tab, the favorite of Fedora folks. So system tap is quite good. I really like it. It's a very feature-rich thing. But uh, I have done some analysis, and uh, it's a bit 
less scalable, but you, you can still use it very well on the Fedora infrastructure and, or in Red Hat, it works really well. And uh, it's very feature rich. The best part is that it's, it's a bit similar to how Dtrace was. So you have uh, system tap scripts, they can be passed to C and then converted into modules and then you execute that modules and the data can be sent back. So, so it's, it's, it would have some interference, but still it's, a, it's very good because you can have scripts which can like virtually do anything. You just write the script and it, it's gonna work. So you have, uh, you can do probe, syscall, read return so so for every read syscall uh, which it would made it would find the time it took and then uh, it can print a histogram there there are very cool features in this so you you see a histogram like that and uh, then there are more probes you can have for example you can do kernel dot trace so it's like hooking onto the trace points you can provide what event you want like sketch switch you can hook onto any kernel function. You do kernel dot function sysopen. So it's going to put uh, a probe there and then you can do whatever, just like that uh, we were doing in the script. So you do probe uh, kernel dot function and then you can use it. So, and then you can even use it in user space directly uh, through um, stab din, it's din -ins based, or you can use uh, uprobe based. I think it uses uprobes. So there's a process and you can do process foo and statement and even which, you, if you have like the debugging for everything, you can do at this uh, uh, source file at this location, I want a probe to be set and I'll do what you what I want to do inside that probe. So it's, it's really a powerful tool. Then you have GDB trace points. Yes, I, I, I know probably a lot of you didn't know that you can do tracing inside GDB also. So you can do trace foo and you have actions and you specify the actions. So for example, so foo is like a, a function I have. So I do trace foo and then I provide actions. So collect registers and locals first and then for st while you are stepping uh, the next uh, nine instructions, you do uh, uh, collect, uh, you collect the registers. Okay. And then you do T start for tracing start. You do whatever you want in your program and you do T, t stop, you, your tracing stops. And then uh, you can use uh, T find to find the frame. You can dump the uh, frame and analyze it. It gives you uh, all the uh, values at the registers because we wanted it to collect the registers and local variables. And you can switch to frames, the more frames, the fourth frame you're switching and then you can analyze it. So you can do like really cool stuff with GDB. Uh, there is an option of fast trace points also. So instead of um, you, you using the normal uh, trace point technique, it uh, inserts jump, but it's, it's specialized. You need to have instructions less than five bytes in uh, certain, uh, in most of the architecture. So you do that. So uh, then I'm going to talk about the most important thing, LTTNG. So, LTTNG is a really awesome tool. It has very less overhead. It's built upon the kernel's trace point, uh, trace probe infra, uh, trace point event and trace event infrastructure, which is already there. Uh, then uh, the kernel part is provided by LTTNG modules, and the user space part is provided by LTTNG UST library. Uh, so you can do, uh, you can create an event like create event, and they do something, and then you can do LTTNG stop and view and destroy. And this generates lots of data and it's very important data, but that's just too much data. Okay. You know that. So, so you have a timestamp here, you have a Delta here, and then the event which you wanted. So here we wanted sketch switch. It's a kernel event sketch switch. So it's going to give you all the uh, data there um, about, so, so this you get when you do LTTNG view. So the data is stored in a unified trace format. And when you do uh, LTTNG view, it uses a tool like Babel trace and to parse that whole data, it uh, parses the metadata and uh, brings about all the event data, takes it out from that uh, CTF uh, formatted uh, file. And uh, you can read it. You can send this data anywhere else as well. So, but, but it's too much info. I know we will uh, soon see about some tracing tools. So what goes on inside LTTNG? So one of the important things is the LTTNG session daemon. It's a session daemon, which always runs. And then you provide the commands, which we were giving here. So you provide these commands and then uh, suddenly if there is a user space application, which has trace points inserted statically or probably dynamically also, and uh, then the kernel trace points are also there and they, ha they have been enabled. So the session D recognizes them and it sets up a consumer daemon attached with uh, some shared memory and uh, the trace data can directly be put into the uh, shared memory there. And the consumer daemon consumes it and it, uh, it has certain providers like 
uh, the trace data can be stored on disk and it can be uh, relayed over to network and you can do like analysis yes you can even do live analysis we are going to see that so then you can you have these tools trace viewing tools from where you can you view all that so babel trace trace compass is a gui tool i'm going to show you how it works because the data is huge, we have to do something about it. So that's the interesting part. So here, so here's an example of a UST example, user space tracing. So you have an instrumented app and there's the UST listener thread uh, with the app because you have built it with the trace points. And when the session daemon sees it, it uses Unix sockets and makes links between the session daemon and a consumer daemon. So these two daemons are like the core. Then it uh, uh, brings up the shared memory, which I already showed you, and then you can like consume it. So the shared memory is basically a ring buffer. You fill it again, and then you consume it as it's getting filled. So it it's makes this thing really scalable. So how does UST work? Well, well we're going to see. You can uh, talk to me afterwards. Yeah, uh, it requires a Vada power as well. And go to LTDNG docs. You can read about that. So some more cool features of LTDNG. So you have trace snapshots. So what you can do is you can do LTTNG snapshot record and it will instantly take a snapshot of the trace buffer and you can store it in a disk or send it over the network. So it's a really interesting feature. You can use it with, in a flight recorder mode. So uh, we, when you use it in a flight recorder mode, it's like you constantly try to create snapshots and override them periodically, just the way a flight recorder in an airplane works. It's a really interesting feature. You save a lot in disk space and you can do like live analysis when you analyze it. So uh, you can trigger a record. For example, a small use case is if you have in Fedora bug, uh, automatic bug reporting tool. So you can trigger a record instantly and take a small snapshot at every time there is uh, something, some, something happens. There's a kernel panic, yeah, trigger a snapshot. So you can record alerts in infrastructures like Nagios, et cetera, and then correlate those logs with the traces you have received from the system. So it's easier to do that. It's very uh, remote, uh, you can do remote analysis and it's very lightweight. So then you have the live trace view where you can use LTTNG relay daemon. So uh, the consumer daemon takes stuff, takes all the events and the relay daemon can write it on the disk as well as relay it and then you can like uh, observe it from any place. So for example, if you have your federal infrastructure servers are there and you have, you have LTTNG sessions running on, on all of them, they can send their data, they can send their trace streams directly through and you can use the relay daemon on another place on some another infrastructure and then you can live view any of those uh, live traces from any of those servers. So this is one small use case. Then the most interesting part, there are thousands and thousands of events, millions and millions of events generated. We have to make sense of it. So how do we make sense of that, all that data? So you have tools for trace viewing and analysis. Yes, that's, now, that's what we are gonna do. We are gonna deal with it now. So the most uh, interesting for CTF, which is being used in LTTNG is, uh, CTF uh, viewer, which is the Babel trace, it's the default viewer. And then the most comprehensive one is a trace compass. Uh, it's a Eclipse based tool and uh, you, ca you have an RCP for that as well. And you can do uh, live views, you can do remote views inside, you can do very detailed analysis. We, I'm gonna give you a demo of that. So you can download the latest trace compass RCP from here and uh, you can uh, so, so there's a critical flow view experimental done by my colleague Francis Giraldo. So he's doing uh, this. So it gives you a critical flow of what was happening uh, in user space as well as actually in the kernel space and what processes were doing. So it gives you a good correlation. So uh, it gives you the critical flow, critical flow view. It gives you the critical path of how your system was. So your system was falling. Your process was falling as it was going through. So uh, you can download it here. So I'll just give you like a small demo of that. So this is uh, the experimental one. You can download the latest one from uh, Eclipse and I have the uh, links on the slides and it's taking time and it's taking time. It's experimental. If it crashes, don't say anything to me. So what I'm gonna show you here is an experiment which uh, Francis did some time back. Uh, he used a trace of apt get tree so it gave uh, uh, so so he he did apt get install tree so what happens when you do apt get install tree so he did this trace in uh, 2013 december i think and uh, so the good thing about traces is you have all this data and you give it to someone and they can analyze it 
Okay, so it's a it's a very good thing to do. So you just generate all these traces and then you can analyze it somewhere else. Just give it to someone. So I took his traces and I uh, put it up in the trace compass. I start fired up trace compass. And what I compared this is with probably it's not a good comparison, but I just wanted to see what's going on. I uh, did a DNF install SL. SL is a good tool, try it out. So uh, I did DNF install SL and saw what's going on. So these traces tell you what happened in the whole system. This is your uh, complete events which were happening as they were. So for example, the, the, this is a scared wake up and so how it happened, every, uh, how everything happened, you can see. So uh, this is your control flow view, how was how your control in the system was going on. So you have all these processes. So for example, we are just interested in uh, APT gate. So I can just uncheck and I can do APT gate and I check the subtree and so so this is apt get here so let me zoom out so this is the complete execution of the apt get it started somewhere from here so if uh, i mean i move it a little bit so it started somewhere here you can zoom so and the, its parent was like a pseudo so there was a clone process here there was a select Okay, so you, you hover over it and you can see it's a sys select syscall which was there. And then you can see the control was passed on. It was, uh, the clone syscall was made. So the green ones here, you have the legend here. So you have, uh, so it was a syscall. When it's green, it's in user mode. Uh, when it's yellow, it's wait block. So, so you can like quickly look at your complete trace of your APT get while it was running. And you probably know what was happening. So there's lots of green stuff, user mode things are happening. Oh, then there's like a big weight block. So, uh, so, so we see it, it, it stops somewhere here. So, so we see there's like a big weight block here. So, so uh, he started analyzing it a little bit more, and he did, he did a very pretty nice view called as uh, control flow view. So this control flow view, what it gives you is the complete. A critical path of what your process was doing. So, so you can see here there are so many man DB processes which had started. It's really ugly. This is actually your APT gate which started here, and then you know here for for all this time. So all this part is synchronized. It was doing some something. So if I select this small part, I have this time delta below. I can analyze that time there, and it's synchronized with this. So you can see what happened in the hold the other system while it was there. And then if I zoom here, I see, oh my God, this is just like something is happening here. Okay, so instantly you know that there was an issue. Why is MANDB communicating so much with, uh, so much with APT gate? So, so you, you can like analyze what, what's happening in your complete system right, right there itself. Then here, this, this, this legend for this color code is a bit different. So these are timers and this is network. So it would obviously get something from the network. So probably somewhere in the end, there was some network interaction and then it's interacting with DPKG as well. You can see here, you know, so here it's interacting with DPKG for the time. So I, so, so you can like hover over this and get more details about this event at what timestamp it was running. So this is something uh, about APT gate. And then you have, I'll show you how DNF looks. So we'll, so I loaded the DNF trace, but we would have to find out where the DNF is. And yeah. Okay. So So here is your DNF execution. I mean, there is some things which I observed. I did not check the code of DNF, but there are some things which I observed. So it's a, there, there is lots of syscalls being made. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll have to look at the source code, but this is just insane amount of syscalls. Probably it was a problem with my system uh, because, um, yeah, so there's like so many clone syscalls being made, but probably it was a problem with my system or it's really a problem in uh, the uh, thing. So, so you can select some zone here and then you can quickly click on resources and in resources it tells you in what CPU 
uh, what was being scheduled and if you have some IRQs which were there. So, so yeah, if you zoom out, you see lots of soft IRQs. So there is something really going on here at this moment. So you can see like a good resource view. You can see the control flow view and uh, you have all the event list here. You can quickly browse through left and right and see all the events, what was uh, happening. So, uh, so yeah, so the interesting thing is crit a critical flow view here. So, uh, so, so you see, it's uh, DNF is like pretty good, and it's this is my system. Probably it was waiting for some network. So, so this is a timer which is being running. So it uh, tried to do something here. There was some block access here. Probably it was trying to read the uh, repo files from the disk and see what's going on. And then you have uh, you you have your normal execution of DNF which is going on. And then there is some timer. And then here you see some network interaction. So there is a network activity. So probably at this time it was fetching uh, data from uh, that. And uh, then it's writing something on the disk here. So you you see some block device writing being done here and then there's the journal d stuff so it was writing here so here it it, it was writing the sl probably back and then you can uh, select some part of it and analyze in in the system what was actually going on so it's like a pretty good tool so trace compass gives you a very very detailed analysis it's it's just a small thing which i've showed you can do much more you can probably just uh, like contact me later and i'm gonna give you another demo of that so uh Coming back to this, so we talked about live trace view. Yes, you have a viewer like LTTNG top, which gives you live trace view on your systems. You can pause the live traces. You can see the, uh, you can go forward and backward and see all those traces. So I'll just give you a small demo. So I'm uh, doing LTTNG uh, top dash K. So uh, just a second, let me. Uh, hmm. yeah, just a second. So. Is it visible now? Yeah. So, so I can do something like that, and it gives you uh, it gives you detail about your CPU execution. So, so you have CPU top, perf top, IO top. You can see. So these are traces which are actually being generated right now, and you are seeing them live. So, so we were talking about sys open. We wanted to know. So, uh, I, I I just try to see. Okay. So it uses K probes here. And sys open, so uh, whenever there will be a sys open, it's gonna like show up. Okay, uh, here. So you have, uh, you can like pause the traces. So as the traces are being generated, you can uh, like pause it with P. So you cannot see that thing here. So there are all the details which are on the right. So you can pause it and then you can go back in time and you can see what traces it just recorded. And you can go forward in time and see what traces uh, it just recorded. There, there, there's lots more with LTTNG top. We are, we are going to talk about it soon as well. So um, it's still in development. It's 0 0.3, so it's a bit stable. So which brings us almost to the end of our talk. And one more thing, this is an amazing slide by Brandon Gregg. I, I've, uh, I'm following him and reading his books, and he does really good stuff. So it's, it's, uh, I have printouts of this. I can distribute them later on if you want. So, and you should pin them at your desk. Whatever, whoever is working on system performance tools, you should have this on your desk. So it gives you a complete view of all the tools which can be used when uh, which part of the system you are trying to diagnose. And it gives you like static analysis tools as well and detailed tools like RDMSR, like just direct instructions to read. And uh, you can, for library, for example, you have LTrace and then perf, ftrace, system tab, LTTNG you can use throughout. I'm actually working these days on eBPF, which is the upcoming stuff uh, going on. And uh, then you can know more about uh, system performance here. And uh, these are the references. And thanks to Fisha, Cerex in Montreal, uh, Dossel Lab, and of course the Fedora community for bringing me here. Don't forget ltdng.org slash docs. The docs are really awesome. The LTDNG guys are working really hard. It's an open source tool. My lab is working on all the open source stuff. So you can just contribute to it. And it's, it's really an amazing place to be. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll be on Suchakra on LTTNG. This is my email ID and my details. So that's it. So questions? Yes. Can someone please bring the mic there?
uh, when compared to system tap uh, how um, so for example in system tap uh, um, specifically in red hat we use um, to either um, probe something uh, a specific uh, crash analysis specific uh, areas of the code uh, which we have to insert it before uh, when the code is run or the system tap has to be compiled and then inserted before we actually run um, so in terms of advantages between system tap and LTTNG uh, what are the other uh, features that LTTNG have or does it um, has some something similar to system tap so uh, if you uh, I, I assume you're talking about dynamic dynamically inserting probes so there is some work which is going on in dynamic insertion of uh, so LTTNG is an ever evolving project so there is some work which is being in, being done by for uh, inserting trace points dynamically so I did some part of it and some part of it is a little bit stable now but uh, the issue is which I saw myself is that if you have like thousands and thousands of uh, trace points and you insert them so it takes a lot of time and you, and you enable all of them. And uh, probably what I observed while working is that the main benefit of LTTNG is that it's insanely scalable. I have tried it from 0 to 64 cores and it's very scalable. There are few even drops, the events are dropped sometimes, but it's really scalable. So uh, this is one of the benefits and it's really fast. Okay, so probably they don't have the same goal. So obviously they have the same goal. All the tools want to be the best. So, but some tools have this feature, some tools have that feature. So you have to like uh, see, okay, uh, th this here, I, I have to do a small check. So I can just probably just use system tap and insert a probe and I write my own script. But here I want a very detailed analysis. It's a production system. I don't want it to crash at all. I want uh, minimum latency. So you use, uh, you properly instrumented statically with uh, LTTNG. So it, it, it's a, I, I would see that the, it's, it's a, you know, thousands and thousands of tools, but you have to select properly which one you have to use. So it's more about uh, that. Then it's about being a competition of tracers that, okay, this is better, this is not better. So I, I see it that way. Probably the goal is to have a very unified system, but you know, it's, I mean, it's, everything is still in development. This is still a new phase. So, yeah. Thank you. So uh, I'll take more questions later on if uh, at all you need. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll tell you about where you can get these slides. Uh, I'll post it on the Twitter. So thanks a lot.